Happy Thanksgiving. It's a good time to remind you that health and fitness isn't just about eating perfect and exercising consistently. Exercise is important. Eating right is important. But so is quality of life. All right, what does that mean? Well, things that improve your quality of life are good for you. So that means sometimes eating off your diet is good for you. That means sometimes skipping the gym is good for you. That means that glass of alcohol or wine with your friends is sometimes good for you. Quality of life is also a facet of health. So don't be so perfect that you ignore that. In fact, it's probably bad for you. Gobble, gobble. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought for sure, I, thought, I thought for sure Justin was going to do that when he, when he started going. Why? It's all you, I saw, bro. I saw it. I saw it. I'm usually the noise guy. I'll, I'll take that. Um, okay, so I, this is such a, a, a cool topic because I, I 100% agree, um, but also a really hard one to, I think, communicate because not everybody knows how to have that balance yes, most yeah. people are already skewed yeah. way on the eating the bad food on the drinking all the time and the skipping the workout these habits are very new and they're just really trying to stick with them yeah so what tough. is that what does that conversation kind of look like when you're you're communicating this message to a client and you do recognize do you wait until one of these like what they would consider you know mess ups happen and then you communicate that to them or do you tell them ahead of time like how does that normally come out like when you're talking to somebody god it's you're right it's super hard the, the best way that i've ever heard it communicated was um you know how would you be with your children in other words if your kids ask you for candy every day you wouldn't say yes every day most of the time you'd say no like no you can't have candy every single day but you also wouldn't say no every single time Yep. You would let them have candy every once in a while, right? Because yeah. um, and that's that balance because you you love them so much, you care for them, so you kind of there's a natural balance that happens there. If you could like if you could flip that on yourself, I think you're more likely to make balanced choices. And you got to be honest with yourself, by the way, because people will be like, "Well, I enjoy you know binging and binge drinking and going crazy." Like, well, do you really like? Is it really enjoyment or is it more distraction? Is it more harming yourself? Because I've eaten meals where, you know, I've gorged. And if I was honest with myself, I wasn't enjoying it. It was more of a self-harm thing. And then there's the meals you have and share with friends where you're actually savoring the flavors and enjoying the company. So I do think it's a practice though. It, it, the balance is, is, is not so evident right out the gates, right? So I found this most effective when it happens. So like, like when they say, oh, this yeah. So like the way I kind of like to do it is like, okay, I'm obviously we're setting all these goals and, and, and I'm, I'm trying to get my client to be consistent and, and show discipline and sacrifice knowing that the inevitable is going to happen. Right. And if I did a really good job, they're bought in, they're bought into it. And we're, and we're, we're, we're hopefully putting at least some weeks behind us of consistency before we have our first, you know, conversation like this. And then like when they, and, and if, if I did a good job, they normally come to me and they're like discouraged. Oh, Adam, I, yeah. you know, I, we went out to eat. Super and this. calm and calm. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, and, and then, and then they, and they, they come to you like, <sighs> you know, feeling uh, like they're they need guilty. to confess yeah. and it's or like shameful. They, yeah, yeah. Shameful. Right. And then, then it, that gives me the opportunity to get them to like peer more into this and go like, okay, <clears throat> well tell me about this. Is this something, do you get to go to dinner that often? with your, you know, brother-in-law who was in town? Like, is that a common thing? Oh no, he comes like once a year, we get to see him. And so it was so great. I got so caught up in the conversation and it's like, okay, well, you know, did you binge and do this and this on top of that? Or did you just have the couple glasses of wine and enjoy? And so I'll, I'll really start to peer into that situation. And then with them decide if like, was this like a one-off occasion where you were having uh, an, a great time with family and friends? And it's not like a habitual thing. It was like, a, it just happened to land on our third week of getting disciplined and dialed in. Hey, let's understand that this isn't a habit of yours. You see him once a year. This is, you, you didn't go have dessert on top of that too. You had a couple glasses of wine and you had great laugh. And so that's a part of And so then I go into that yeah. conversation and, and that way too, let them understand that like not to beat themselves up over this. Totally. Right. Here we are today. We're right back on it again. In, in the real world, when, when we've gotten to your goal, I want you to be able to have these nights. I want you to be able to have a guilt-free, incredible evening with your spouse or your brother-in-law and go and have a couple of drinks and and you will be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to wait until 
because I you know of what, course it's because it happens yeah, yeah. it's a super common yeah and if yeah. you did a good job of motivating your client to be inspired to be you know especially just, if you're vulnerable and then yeah. they can come and be honest with you yes that's that's super important exactly yeah, and yeah. and and then and then I think that opens the door to have that conversation there's there's a big difference like okay and I I think people watching listening to this has probably experienced this before where you go off the diet. Um, versus when you go off, quote unquote, the diet, but you do it in a more healthy way. So the unhealthy way, it's almost like you can't get the food in fast enough and mm. you're not really enjoying what's in your mouth. You're thinking about the one that's on the fork, the bite that's on the fork or the chip that's in your hand. And so it, it's more of this impulsive, like I got to eat this and just get as much as I can versus when you go off in a healthy way, you savor it. Like you eat the meal and you're mm. like, oh God, this is so good. And I'm really enjoying the flavor of this. And it's not this like fast impulsive thing. Then the other example I think of is, you, you know, what does drinking alcohol look like in your early twenties versus when you get your thirties? Right. Okay. You remember that when you first started drinking, you go out with your friends. It was and a race you, to get drunk. Oh, it was always, yeah. let's just go how, as hard as we can. Yeah. And everyone's going to get sick and, and black out. Right. And then when you're in like your thirties and you've already experienced enough times and all that, that's not fun. Then you know what your limits are. You have a few drinks. You hang out with your friends. You enjoy yourself. Well, that's totally it. I, different. I think taking the air out of it, the pressure off of it. Like I think, you know, as I went further in my career, and I didn't train a lot of competitors, so I had a little bit of different perspective on nutrition in terms of like the rigidity that I was establishing from the very beginning. Uh, would just categorize like foods and like educate their way through. Like these are the preferential foods this is what's going to do best for your goals. You know, this is where we're getting in sort of like, you know, a little bit less ideal than this is like very, very sparingly. Like this is something yeah. like a, a special occasion comes up, like, you know, these holiday events come up, you're hanging out with your family, you know, you kind of got to account for these situations and, and not go full ham. Like it's just about like, you know, keeping like these, these established habits that you've been working on, but uh, being able to also enjoy and, and uh, realize that these, these food groups and these alcohol like drinks and um, you know, some of these social situations are going to occur. Uh, and for me, it was just like less, less um, like I'm, I'm going to hammer them like that. That wasn't like a sense that I was trying to convey to my clients. Yeah, there's also, you can also be like, you know, if you start to create balance around this, you, you can be smarter about, the things that you do when you are doing the things that are off, let's say. Right. right. There's like, wins probably within that night. Too. Right. So yeah. like, um, like I don't drink that much. Right. But if I do, I don't like to do it too late at night. Why? Because then it interrupts my sleep, sleep and it just, mm. it's more damaging. Yeah. It's just yeah, more absolutely. damaging. So I'll start earlier, like 5 PM and then I'll stop by like seven or 8 PM. Cause I'll go to bed by 10, 11 and I feel okay. And I won't go past a certain point. Um, I'll use a product like Zbiotics. Zbiotics makes a big difference with mm -hmm. how I feel the next day. I also won't combine it with a bunch of foods that also tend to bother me. So I won't stack things on top of each other because there's a balance there, right? Like yeah. there's a, it, like one glass of wine is still not ideal, but it's but if I throw well, that on top of you know things that I that bother my gut on top of the fact that I'm eating it late and I'm getting poor sleep. Yeah. Well, now the 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 scale is not so much enjoying myself. Now the negative effects are going to outweigh. And you want to get satiated from the the quality foods first. I mean, that's, that's right. That's the thing. And then it's like it doesn't. The natural tendency isn't to go overkill with uh, the indulgent foods because it's like you're already pretty much satisfied. Now it's just a little bit of a treat. Yep. I feel like that that what ends up happening in those real life situations where the client comes back and they express this, you know, guilt or shame for what they did. There's always tends to be, if I've been doing a good job as a coach and trainer on like how we talk about eating your protein first and, you know, avoiding the bread and chips when it comes to the, the like if I did a good job there, there's normally wins within this dinner yeah. that we we're talking about too, yep. where they're like, Oh, Adam, I had these glasses of, of wine and we were having all this fun. It's like, okay, well, what, did, how, what was the meal? But, Oh no, I made a good choice. I still had steak and I passed on the bread when the table said, listen, you're we're moving in the right direction still like and this stuff all adds up if for the first 35 40 years of your life you were you weren't even aware of these better decisions mm -hmm. you could be making and here you have this one-off you see this relative who came in town and you guys had some glasses of wine you enjoyed yourself and you already passed on the bread which you normally would have done you didn't have the dessert like you normally would have done you ate a good-sized portion of protein 
and then you had some glasses of wine. And guess what? You're back up here again today, and we're back on your training. Yeah. And we're back, and like that's it. Actually, a huge win, and we're moving the right direction. And you just having that self awareness that you're not justifying a behavior that you do every weekend. That's a different conversation, yes, right? For sure. If this was something that you every weekend you're making an excuse to me, like, oh, well, we we're yeah. having fun. It was just all friends. Like, or they're okay. not like, hey, I drank a bottle of wine by myself. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was at yeah, home just crying. You know, like, that's uh, really well, another discussion. Yeah, there right? might be another. <laughs> yeah. There might be a let's, problem. Let's call yeah. our therapist. I, I do wish. God, I wish. You know, we work with a lot of partners and stuff. Man, I wish I had Zbotics as a trainer. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, he, I, mean, I mean, I selfishly wish. because Well, I, not just for me, but for my client. I had a lot of clients that enjoyed wine. Yeah. And even when they had a little bit, I had some clients that would still get, especially red wine. I don't know what it is about red wine. Some people say it's a tannins. Or, you know. Yeah, you know, it gives me some pretty pretty substantial hangovers. You get it, too. It's brutal, yeah. Yeah, you Mainly get it, too. wine, yeah. It's in, so Jessica's like that. If Dumb's she drinks, there going, if like, she drinks, you guys drink cheap wine. You, yeah, yeah. Well, if Jessica <laughs> drinks red wine, she'll get a migraine almost every every time. Do, what, is there a difference between... Yes. Yeah. Fancy wine and, and cheap wine makes a big difference. Like yeah, I don't know why, but there is a difference, I'm so sure. So you're not drinking yeah. Gallo? What is it called? In the yeah. Big, the big jug it has something to do with the... I mean, maybe Andrew can look it up or what like that, but it has something to do with the sugars and stuff and the way it's distilled. And I like, like there's there is a reason why why nicer wines tend to not give people as much of a hangover as cheaper wine. Have like, you guys ever seen that? There was a, uh, I don't know, it wasn't a study, but they they took a bunch of expensive red wines and then they took, um, I think Trader Joe's has this cheaper wine that's like a blend or whatever. <laughs> two buck chuck, you mean? Yeah, and they yeah. poured them in, and they had a bunch of like ex experts or whatever. Come, sommeliers. Like, yeah, and they're like, oh, this one's definitely, you know, the most, and they were, they were wrong. Well, remember, there was a big, there was <laughs> oh, a big man. thing that happened with the two buck chuck was a, a divorce that happened, right? And then she got all the wine and so she discounted it super what? cheap. So yeah, it was really, yeah. It, so it was expensive wine she made. Yeah, cheap? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. There's a, was it as a way to get back at him? Or what something? was, what was two buck chuck? What was it? it what's the name? Uh, I mean, it's Charles Shaw. Is yes, the name thank of the, you. The company, uh, it was two bucks at one point. Now it's, yeah. I think, three dollars at Trader Joe's. Inflation, but they've done actually yeah, well at, at various uh, events yeah. where they've compared the wines, and it's actually won uh, in some cases. So there's st a story behind it. There, there is a story. Yeah, there, yeah. there was a, a divorce or something. I don't happened, know the details about that. Like she, like she inherited like all this wine, and then so that she put it out for like something like that. I don't know the exact. <laughs> it was a long time ago when I remember that happened. But. Yeah. I you just wish, I just wish I had Z Bodics give my clients because I had a lot of them that were just they would just deal with the after effects they, they loved it so much it was such a important thing for them to have you know once a week with their spouse it's yeah. like a thing well yeah. the audience oh, yeah. that has been listening for since the beginning of the podcast knows my journey if you go back far enough you hear me saying like I never me too. drank me too I, yeah yeah I used to tell yeah. we used to talk like about any amount of alcohol best me yeah up. when we I'd yeah. be like I never drink totally like, my influence once thing. or twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, vice versa, you guys and me and edibles. Then, it's so, definitely yeah. not the case now. I definitely uh, drink a lot more than I used to in moderation, though, too. Like, I, I'm not the type of person. You're who, not even weekly. No. You don't even have a drink. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, me neither. Definitely not. Katrina does, but I don't. Yeah. I don't have a weekly like yeah, that. I She's, won't have. I'll have a. Uh, I never. I almost never drink. But in London, we did quite a bit because of the, the pub. Yeah. And, and honestly, so, yep. I mean, we I, I let the lid off out there. Like I, we had drinks almost every night, which is like, that is unbelievably Me rare. Me too. So yeah. the guy, and before that could have went like a month and a half and I didn't have one drink. And so in a situation like that, and again, there's an example, right? Here we are. What I mean, we've had, been on a nine year journey together, building this business. What a memorable, we're invited out to ARC with yeah, George Peterson. Yeah, you think Peterson. I'm not going to go experience the pulp culture in, yeah. in London? You're crazy. Yeah. I mean, there was nights I drank, I drank and I didn't want to drink. I know. I know. <laughs> right. So we had that. What I was if, even there with you. Remember yeah, we were, we were walking and we were like, ah, I'm good, man. We've, we've drank the right. last couple of nights. Let's, let's, let's be chill tonight. Let's just, let's just have a dinner and, and call it. And then we ran into fans. Yeah. Yeah. So we ran into a couple of fans. Yeah. It's like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's like, on. I, yeah, and honestly, <laughs> It was at that point, it was like, I wanted to experience that with them more totally. than I even cared myself. And so, yeah, no, I think there's there's times and places for totally. that stuff and a way to have balance. Yeah. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we got a huge sale. Black Friday starts right now. Check this out. 60% off everything. And I mean everything. Every MAPS program, every MAPS program bundle. Those are already discounted. Take an additional 60% off. If you're interested, take advantage now. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I got to tell you guys, so this is so cute, right? So my daughter's almost one. 
And God, uh, it's already one already. I know, oh. I know. Well, oh, no, man, don't don't remind me because I, I looked at. In fact, Jessica shared pictures with me from uh, yeah. from last from when she was like two months old. It, yeah. it wasn't that long ago, yeah. but they look so different. And I'm yeah. just like, oh my god, the birthmark seems to be staying strong still, too, right? It, typically, the 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 what do what, they say? What do they call it? Is a strawberry birthmark? They call it. I don't remember what they call it, but it it, it goes away typically by three or four. It's like ninety something percent. I hope it away. stays. So do I. I like so it. So cool. If it's it so stays. cute. It gives uh, her character. I love it. Yes. I, yeah. I don't. I mean, if it stays, I mean, I'm, the story is that the angel kissed her yeah. on the cheek. That, that's that's why she has. It. But anyway, yep. she's now starting to actively engage and play games with me, like certain games, right? So she knows how cars operate. By the way, she's super into cars, like her brother, which is cool because hmm. he's got all these cars. So now she goes and gets them, and as long as he doesn't notice, she's okay. Otherwise, he'll come pull the car out of her hand. And like let your sister play with some. <laughs> Cars, but anyway, we have this this rock climbing wall thing that you can hook up, and kids can climb on it. But the other side of it's smooth, so I put it on this low incline, so on some pillows, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I put it up there because uh, my son was riding his cars off of it. So first, she kind of like army crawls herself over there with the car, and she knows to put it on the top to bring it down. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. She understands, so she's doing that. Then she goes around and she tries to climb it, and it's really. It's really slippery, but this little kid, she's got this grip on her, man. So she grabs the sides and like pulls herself up, pulls herself up, holds onto the top. And then I, I noticed that she was kind of sliding down. So I'm like, is she doing this on purpose or is she accidentally sliding down? So then I go and I sit in front of her and she excitedly comes up. She looks at me and I'll share the video with you guys. She holds onto it. And then she does this with her hands. She lets go and she watches me. Shh. She knows like, oh that she's sliding, dude. Yeah. So she climbs up, yeah. she does it again, and then that's she just dope. she puts her hands like this and just yeah, lets she herself just figured it out like that's a little so, seal. She just so slides great. down backwards on the thing. I was crying. Now, do you have a favorite? Okay, obviously we've said this before that every phase presents you know different cool things yeah. about each age. But do you all have like a year like that, like ages one to two or oh, zero man. to one, They're or like great, do you dude. have? Yeah. I know that's so generic to answer that though. You got to have so I can answer. I've only had Max for four years, and I I think that the the age the four to six range yeah i think five is the coolest that's so fun yeah, yeah. he's so, so cool fun. right now yeah, like he's i mean we're like buddies and we can come we could actually have like real conversation and like you know it's like and he's independent enough where he can kind of do some things so even if dad wants a break like there's so many like yeah. cool parts about that phase i feel like well 10 to i feel like it's um they i mean they know a lot more and they can communicate a lot more but at the same time they're still like a little kid at heart yeah you know so it's like they're on the cusp of like That's true. transitioning into like the teenage kind of stuff preteen stuff but um still just like have those like oh like we'll come you know cuddle up on you on the couch and and we'll still like have those little kid moments but yeah. you can like really pick their brain like what's their favorite music like what they're into and it's really interesting to see them start to develop their own uh individual yeah, kind of thoughts I, that, I loved it when uh my oldest he's 18 now but right around the age of 14 we would have some good debates i really enjoyed that oh, yeah. because that's where ethan's at right now. yeah although he's you know he's 14 so he's obviously limited with his wisdom and stuff like that it, you know i could see where he's going mm -hmm. and he could make compelling arguments you know little kids don't really make compelling arguments they'll say that they want I feel like that could be like a, yeah. an awesome thing and an annoying thing at the same time well i can't be annoyed by <laughs> it because it's me right? yeah so no, it's me course. reflected back <laughs> right right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he'll make these like really good compelling arguments you know mm -hmm. even now now he's 18 and him and i will get into discussions and this shit will his little shit will share studies with me i'm like you're annoying uh, like i am <laughs> oh no actually this study showed this and then i'll be like well but did you see the study the length of time wasn't good and the, and the sample size was good well i got this one then then i'll share one back and him and i will do this like study battle <laughs> oh <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. but i love it because it's stimulating you know yeah it's i mean and it's got it like obviously it's you right so you see yourself yeah, like, that's totally. probably one of the strongest characteristics about him that's like you wouldn't yeah. you say oh totally yeah so totally. that's got to be pretty cool i like the baby stage too because they're just so cute you know from like six months to a year that's my they're least just favorite. like little chubby i feel like that's my least little, favorite really yeah, yeah. yeah of like, course there's moments really like I, I i love the sleeping on my chest and i'm not saying that i didn't like it at all i love that i did but it doesn't even come close to like how i feel right now with him like he's so he's and i still feel like you get those emotional love parts yeah. even at this age last yeah. night i'm tucking him in i can i put him down last night and uh, he was just in a funny mood and wanted to stay up. You could tell he didn't want to go. He was wide awake still. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to lay here for two more minutes and daddy's leaving. Okay. 
So I go to finally after two minutes pass or whatever, I uh, I go okay, Daddy's leaving. Kiss him on the forehead, and I and I go to get up. He goes, wait, wait, you forgot something. And I said, what? He goes, he goes, you need to hug me and kiss me. And then he gets out of his sheet, stands up, you know, arms yeah, up real yeah. big, and then wants to kiss me on the mouth. And he's reaching up to do it. And, Daddy, you're getting tall. <laughs> you're getting tall. <laughs> what? Yeah. Same height, bro. Same height. You know what I'm Thanks, buddy. Yeah, he just, you know what I'm saying? He just wants to talk uh, more is all it is. He's yeah. finding something to have conversation yeah. about because he's already got Aurelia, up. Aurelia tells Jessica whenever she like, because she's out, she's home, right? So she'll wear her, you know, her sweats or whatever. But if we go out on a date or something, she'll dress up. She'll come out and you go, Wow, Mama, you're beautiful. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, dude, I remember the first time Max said that job, to buddy. Katrina was like game over yeah. right there. So like, she's like trained him to say that too. Like, is mm. is mommy pretty? Is mommy? Says, no, no, yeah, no so, way. Yes, yeah, so he definitely. <laughs> yeah, she razzed me too because she's like, she's like, you know, I've, I'm gonna train my son to give it to me more. If he you know what? You know like, what's? Oh. Hey, you know what's hilarious though? That's a shot, man. Oh, yeah. You know what's hilarious though? Because w Jessica and I, if we get in little spats. She's the one that's more likely to like you could like he'll tell more with her than with me. I don't, my voice doesn't get raised. I, I'm pretty controlled. Yeah. Whereas Jessica will get she's more emotional. She'll get loud or whatever. So if Aurelius is anywhere with an earshot, he'll come in and he'll take my side. Not because <laughs> not because I'm right, but because she sounds angry. So he'll come in and be like, "Mama, stop being mad. Stop being mean to Papa. That's not nice. <laughs> take a break." You're being mean. And I'm, I'll, I'm sitting there like, oh. <laughs> he's got a new thing right yeah. now that's really funny. It's a little honorary of him when he does it. But like I've told you guys before, he's learned to play this back and forth of asking mom. And so she's in the kitchen. I'm right there in the living room. So we're like right there next to each other. And I hear him talking to her. And she's like, no, no, no. We already, we've already done enough of that today. We're going to do this now like that. And then he comes climbing next to me. Daddy, on the, and then you can hear her, Max, you've already, like, to, shh, I'm talking to daddy. Yeah, yeah. He tells her to Dude. shush. I'm like, oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> Dude, uh, I was at a um, restaurant uh, and uh, was talking with, like, the boys. And uh, one new thing that, like, Everett's doing right now is he's learned that uh, he can, he's basically, like, the, the, the implementer of chaos. So he will, he knows how to push, like, Ethan's buttons now to like because he thinks it's funny. Mm. So he'll he'll say something that we know will get him react and, and mad, and and then he sits there and dies laughing. And I'm like, oh, look, God. buddy, this is gonna blow up in your face. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I get that, like you know, you figured this out, and this is kind of a new thing. But uh, I'm I'm like I'm not gonna be there. Like there's gonna be times where you guys need to sort this out and and you know regulate it amongst yourselves. I'm like if you're gonna be a pester him. You know, like he's got rain to, to correct you on that. Oh, yeah. And so, and then I talk, and so I'm now I'm like checking him. I'm like, stop pestering him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, things are going to happen as a result of that. Yeah. And like, that's the real So world. he's going through that right now. He's like, he's, cause he, he, he's the little, little mischievous little jokester right now. Like, and he's really like trying to like figure out like what he can get away with. And I'm yeah. like, oh, great. You know, yeah. I, you, what you're saying, I think is actually a really, uh, interesting and important kind of conversation around like the challenges of having like, you know, two kids that close in age and, and, and especially boys that are going to be really testing each other like that, because, and I know people hate when you give the, use an example of you know, animals and you're talking about kids, but I've shared before, like the big mistake that I made with the two bulldogs, remember like how yeah, you correct, you overcorrected yeah, so, over so much on protecting the younger one that was weaker when he was weaker, that when he got to be a teenager, mm -hmm he would just punk the bigger, older, stronger one. And it was just unfair to a point where he would be hurting the other one. And, and the other one was so afraid of me mm -hmm. that he wouldn't do anything. And I'm like, oh, that's so bad. I did that with my older two because my daughter's obviously a girl. So I was told my oldest, like, you can't, you can't touch her. Don't touch her. Well, yeah. now my daughter terrorizes him. Yeah. <laughs> She'll yeah. beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And he won't do anything. I'm like, oh, man, maybe I should have let him when they were younger. Now he's a little too old to do that. But yeah, you know, maybe when they were younger. So yeah, yeah. this reminds me actually of the of the the talk we had with Jordan Peterson. So we Oh, we, totally. Yeah. We had Jordan. So we haven't aired uh the episode. Um, I don't think we'll air it before this one, right? Right, Doug? What do you think? It'll be right I, it may go it, before this. It may. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So you maybe you heard it, maybe not, but the conversation was around social media. And at one point I asked him a question. I've been thinking about his answer ever since. Oh, especially Twitter. Yeah. He, I he said, yeah, because we talked about how in the real world there's checks and balances to what you say, because if you say someone to, if you say something to someone in person, there's always the threat of, 
violence or they know who you are. They see what you look like or what are people going to say or, but on social yeah, media consequences and in the real world, I could say something. It'll reach two people, three people, right? On social media, I could reach everybody. The algorithm will amplify it. Um, and, uh, there's no like real world consequences. And so what it, what it's done is it's actually created or encouraged this very strange breed of narcissistic person who, um, who their value is shown through their expressed outrage. Their expressed, their virtue is expressed by what they write, not their actions. So it's just what I write their comments. Oh, I'm so angry. Oh, I hate this person. And then what's really interesting is that they will band together to essentially execute anybody who doesn't even want to say anything. Mm -hmm. So not even say anything. Oh, you didn't put the black square. Oh, you didn't say something about this. Yeah. You must be on the side of, you know, X or whatever. Really crazy. But he, but I, my question to him was, how do we fix this? And he said, I don't think we can because you asked him about Twitter uh, or did you ask? Him? Yeah, okay. I did. So like, how do we fix <laughs> I was it? It's like, wait, see, this is my question. It's unclear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my, the point was that the question was, how do we fix this? No, no, can? no. You're right. No, hundred percent. And he's like, I don't think we can because well, never in it, human history has this ever happened. It originated because yeah. I was, so what I've been thinking about a lot is this like, okay, there's this uh, huge debate about Elon taking over X and mm. is he going to make it into this healthier version of social right. media? That's right. That's and right. so I, I was like, I, and, salvageable. And, and yeah. honestly, until we had that conversation, I really believe that. I really believe like, oh, Elon Musk is going to save yeah, the day. Free speech is going to We're going to have this, yeah. like he says, town square, and it's going to be like, it's going to be like it's supposed to be. And when we positioned that question and asked him what he thinks the future of that looks like, and then he went on to explain what you just explained. And it was like, oh shit, I never thought of it like that. Like it could, ne no matter who runs it, It'll never be this this ideal place because it fosters these behaviors that only actors. in the digital world can mm -hmm. you get away with. Because yeah. in real life, it just don't exist. If you acted like that, people would uh, would ostracize you, or you get punched in the face, or you wouldn't even be able to talk to people because they would ignore you because you are crazy. Mm -hmm. But in, in this platform. You know, crazy, outlandish, absurd, psychopathic get people. Your attention get a lot of attention. In mm -hmm. fact, sometimes get you know, highlighted or get the most attention. And so no matter who is running it and setting the rules or not, it really, and I, I think all of us had that same feeling of, Oh shit. It's like, not fixable. Yeah. There's no hope. There's no, no. way to communicate there is no in a civil manner where it's like, yes, it, it, it's not going to revert back to like interactions in person. Like it doesn't, it's not going to reflect that at all. Ever. No, think about it in the real world. Imagine that person, that when something happened around the world came out and just was just, just outraged. Ah, but then every time something happened in the world, they did that after two or three times. Yeah. You would know this person's fake. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. You did nothing. All you do is scream and shout. Ah, yeah. You haven't said anything about this. Rah. Yeah. But you actually don't ever do anything or what about, or imagine this, you, your group of friends and there's a friend that comes over and talks about how much they care about things. And, oh my God, this is so terrible. Yeah. I was crying it's yesterday. Shame on you for not caring. The first time you heard it, you'd be like, wow, this person really cares. After yeah. the fifth time, you'd be like, they're full of shit. They just talk about all this stuff. They never really actually do anything. This person's totally fake. They're just a narcissist, yeah. right? Or imagine this in the real world. People walking up to you going, hey, what do you think about this topic? Um, I don't know. I don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. Oh, you must be on the, let's get him. He doesn't want to say it's anything. It's all virtue and shame. It's, it's like those two like yeah. moving levers, like the they're, whole interaction. They're is. disgusting behaviors that in the real world would get washed out. Yeah. But on social media, get celebrated and amplified. And it just it's so crazy. I mean, we probably all did the same thing, right? We, that kind of like blew our minds. And then we probably all sat and thought, wait, is there an answer? Or is it no. like, it's not. No. Like there's no, like when, after he said that, there's I no thought- for it. You know what? This is so true. Like, I don't care who's running it. I don't care if you think the most perfect person with all the answers. There's better and worse, but there's nothing that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. sure, and and I and I do believe that what Elon's doing will be a better version. Yeah. But it also goes back to what I told you guys originally when we first started talking about all this stuff. That you know, a lot of these guys, you know, Jack Dorsey's and the Zuckerberg's, most of them are like libertarian type of guys, anyways. Like yeah. they yeah. they weren't trying to be socialist. It's like. 
But now, and, and it makes me feel he that way even more now that they just got put in these situations like, oh, yeah. I guess we should do this or we should block that. Or like, you know, it's a good example. It's like they built a playground and then they're like, oh, you guys can just interact however you're going to interact. That's and then right. they interacted and it's like everybody's got the worst behavior you could imagine. Oh, and then right. they got, then you have a certain maybe side, like, you know, extreme left people that are in your ear. You need to make these rules. You need to make yeah. those rules. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay, we need to do something. And the government's getting... like, oh, this is powerful. Right. We probably should get our hands in this as yeah. well. Yeah. Deal. Yeah, you so know it's, it's a great so example. It's of, doomed. You know it's a great example of what we're talking about. Okay, think of the profile picture on social media, which is your picture. It's your face, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody is posting a profile picture wearing a mask, okay, so that says something immediately. Immediately, you know what you are, and if this is you, then this is you. Mm -hmm. You are one hundred percent a virtue signaling narcissist. There's no reason to take a picture. Nobody's in the room. You don't need to wear a mask. Why are you showing a picture? Wearing a mask because yeah. you want everybody to know how much you care or how much you side with yeah. or what you or think MAGA or, hat or whatever. You know, yeah. it's like it's an immediate uh, response you're trying to get from people. It, but yeah. a mask is even funnier because I'm yeah. literally covering my face. You don't even see what I look like. Yeah. All you no see sense. is yeah. this fake thing that I want you so badly to think I care about. Yeah, it's crazy. It's wild. So when yeah. he said that, I was just man, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days, and even myself, it even induces. Here's the thing that, and this is the other thing that he talked about, is that these traits are within all of us. So mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, someone's yeah. good, someone's bad. All of us have the potential to do this kind of stuff. And I think about myself and mm -hmm. how it brings that out in me even, you yeah. know, and how I like, oh shit, I got to control yeah. that. So that's why I think the thing still survives, right? Like I don't, like as much as I like, I think it's doomed for being a good place ever, but it still survives because it's in all of us, yeah. that mm -hmm. bad side. It'd be kind of like going to like, uh, like, like needing real therapy for your relationship and you choose to do it on Jerry Springer. <laughs> yeah, like seriously like that like like if the, the thought this will of fix my marriage right the thought of like twitter ever being a, a healthy yeah. good place <laughs> is the same thought of like mm. oh let's go to jerry springer to try and fix this cheating that we got going on in our relationship like just come on like that's just impossible like no. yeah. it's already set to not be successful even though that's how it's positioned on the show like oh so, let's come on the show and talk about your problems so let's <laughs> talk about this then what do you guys think it's a great visual what is social media good for if anything and then how would you use it in a way to i guess maximize the good minimize the, the bad so first off do you think that there's good to social media sure i mean we um, i think for business reasons yeah, yeah. Edu I, education wise if you actually have valid valuable information that you want to promote you can get a lot more people in front of you or you that can, you want to reach you can you, yeah, yeah, like you, you can reach. absolutely scalability wise um the algorithm can work uh in your favor or not totally for the type of content you want um i, I mean i've actually intentionally messed with this just to see what happens and i joke about like whatever i'm currently in, into mm -hmm. like my explorer page looks just like that i mean it could it can swing from very dramatically different looking yeah. imagery just based off of that. And obviously I haven't gone through and really try to curate my stuff and, and unfollow everybody and then only follow yeah. the positive stuff or whatever I want, but you could absolutely do that. You know, what's interesting about that is I've, and I've talked to some people who've done that where they've done experience where they just like follow like little kitty, you know, videos and, and they get like their whole feed is like nature and like mm -hmm. positives it, it, but it only lasts so long. Like it's like a mm. month or it's two months and they're just like, you know, yeah, I'm like just following these certain pages. And then all of a sudden, like something gets like put in their feed and, and it, it gets starts like, it gets their attention. They start looking at it too long. Cause it's the not algorithm just, shifts. So it's, it's like, it's, I don't know. Dude. The algorithm doesn't just pick up God, that would what be odds are click against on, you. What else? also picks up how long you hover on it, how long you yes, scroll yes, or don't scroll, yes, exactly. whether you comment or not. So it'll literally like modify itself. How, too. what a cool like study though. It would be, be. kind of, that'd be a cool thing to yeah. like have people that intentionally curated it. Uh, you know, what a difference it made in their life. Uh, everything from doing stress, paying attention to their stress level, cortisol mm -hmm. levels, things like that. The relationship, their relationship, uh, yeah. how long were they able to sustain just mm -hmm. looking at kitty photos or whatever it was for yeah. a certain period of time. And then how quickly did they go back and what percentage of people stayed that way? That would be a really actually interesting. Cause uh, the opportunities there, I feel, you know, like I feel like it, but it's, uh, um, 
uh, you know, it doesn't benefit um, the company because they want your attention. Yeah. And so it's like, you'll, I think after a while, I, I, I would assume that, uh, you know, after you're like looking at all these positive things, it's not really grabbing you as much. And yeah. so you're like less likely to pull. Well, I, just, I think that it'll just, something will be there and it'll pick up the fact that it caught your attention a little bit. Yeah. And then the algorithm changes, yeah. you know? I, I think, think the most challenging is for like your, your guys is oh, actually all three of you because of Brie too that generation that grew up it, it, as a social norm has to be the most Tell challenging. Like it. for me, it, it's very easy to see. It's very easy to discipline myself to, to, to disconnect yeah. because I didn't turn it on until I had the intention to build a business. Not just that, but you're more self-aware of what's good, what's good, what's bad, what's affecting you positively or negatively. Yeah. It's like giving a kid, you know, here's the cabinet full of candy uh, and healthy stuff, you make the choice. You choose whatever you want. Yeah. To like you wouldn't do that to a kid. Now an adult, you know, oh. still has a challenge with I it. I had a friend like that, but that it, his parents did that. Really? Yeah. It yeah. just had a, a and drawer that and out. I had, oh, pff, yeah, diabetes. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Right. For sure. Of yeah, course. So. Yes. I wonder though, it, even being older and self-aware, like you're saying I am, if I was born into it, would I still, would I find a way to justify the good of it? You know what I'm saying? Probably. Like I would be self-aware and I'd be like, oh yeah, no, it could be bad, but I mean, it's also, here's all the good things about it. And so I would find a way to still you justify yeah. why it's a, a necessity or whatever. You know? No, I think it's good for finding new information because there's just an endless supply of interesting articles and topics and discussions, but you have to be very conscious about how the, the platform you use and, and, and the algorithm and how you're setting that up. I think that's important. I think groups... I've said this more very uh, before, very valuable. So you can find groups on Facebook with people who are very interested in similar topics or experts, and they can really tailor your learning. Like I go on groups that I have no expertise in whatsoever, but that I'm interested in, like neurobiology, but these are all neurobiologists or students, and then they'll discuss studies and stuff, and it's really cool. It's an easy way to learn. So there's that. Building a business. Uh, but I, I mean, the whole like just doom scrolling and... You know, it's just so powerful. It's like, it's like literally it's like processed foods, but even worse. Mm -hmm. Like now you have access to this hyper palatable, um, you know, digital experience. Do you have the wherewithal, the discipline, the, you know, do you have the strength to prevent yourself from going in the mm -hmm. wrong direction? You know what I like? So casinos have been around longer than like smartphones, yeah. right? And watching people just uh, on the slot machines oh. and like the, the engineering and technology and science that went in to be able to give somebody reward, just enough reward. And then also like uh, scramble enough. So there's variety and a guarantee. They just like looked in that direction first. And then all those same features are on the phone now. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure um, in the, in the d movie or documentary or whatever on social dilemma, I think they actually make that. Do they? I think they make that comparison. Wonder, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Maybe they, that's where I saw. It. I think they do. Um, I mean, it's just like video games, right? They yeah. figured that out too. Like they, like when they first came you know yesterday the max and i were playing uh mario and it's like it's such a crazy thing to watch you guys like i mean i don't know how many times now we've we've played that game uh together the original the, the original okay. right so i have the original nintendo and it trips me out how easy it is, is to, to let it go to let it go yeah like there is no push never there's yeah. never oh dad no wait one more time it's like literally okay that's it and then we he like pops up, no big deal. If he is on his iPad playing anything, totally I don't different. care. I don't give a shit yeah. if it's puzzles. I don't care. I don't, even if it's a good game, yeah. it is crazy how much the the new apps, the new games, yeah. they have learned that reward system. Yep. Even in the even in the good games that are that are beneficial, they've learned that so well that 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 small mind of this this young mind. Has, isn't aware enough of it mm -hmm. and it just it's different pulling that away from him getting yeah. him to stop doing that versus before we had that kind of understanding of the uh, addictive properties it's a different end goal that was uh, engineered in there totally you know like they, they've hyper focused on keeping them in on the platform part of by you, all means necessary part of the training when it comes to um you know let's say diet for example i'll make i'll bring it to diet right part of the training with diet especially in the early years is to not have the temptation there. So in other words, if you're learning how to develop a good relationship with food, right? You're learning how to enjoy healthy foods and, and pursue healthy foods and maybe really avoid the stuff that's not good for you. 
one of the first, I mean, first stages that last for a long time is I'm just not going to have it in my house mm -hmm. because I don't have this, the discipline and the skill yet, because you eventually can develop it, but I don't have the discipline and the skill yet to say no when I'm supposed to, because the temptation is there. When with children, and I did not understand this with my older kids, right? But with children, that's essentially what you're doing when you're giving them this, totally. this limitless access is you're saying to yourself, my child has the discipline and skill to know when to stop. <laughs> they don't. They don't. So no. it's like somebody who's dealing with obesity and you're like, yeah, you can have all this food in your house. You can have all the crazy stuff in your house. You just know when not to eat it or what. Yeah, good luck. It's not going to happen. And the hardest part for parents that are listening right now, especially if you if they're young, is once you break the seal, that's when it gets difficult. Well, now you got to hold it. You're, you're dealing with an addict. The discipline tough. it takes as a parent to resist breaking the seal is the easy part. That's yeah. the easier. Even though that takes discipline still on the, on the parents and mindfulness of those opportunities when you want to give it to them or let them have it. Yeah. But it, it's very much so, and I've, your an analogy with the sugar is, is the same thing. That's what it, it took consistency early on from Katrina and I to be disciplined around that. But we already laid a solid enough foundation that I can see the relationship that he has with it. It's amazing. Can let him have a candy or treat. Like now that people have listened to me talk about that journey, he went from never having any of that stuff to where my son can communicate now and ask for those things. And I could give him in moderation, these types of things. And it's not like this. Yeah. Kids you want deliberate boundaries. Yeah. You've never had this free reign. And so it's not weird for dad to open a small fun pack of candy and you get one, I get two, you get one, I get two. Oh, the bag's empty. And he's okay. With and it. he's okay. Yeah. And it's, that's it. That's all you got, bro. And yeah, it's, no. and it's a, that is like such a reward and treat and enjoyment for him. And he doesn't, and I don't think he feels deprived at all because he's not even asking for totally. anymore. Like, but that had everything to do with the setting the table first. And I feel the same is going to go for the iPad and the phone mm -hmm. is the, that really is right now with him. I have to lay that now. Totally. Yeah. All right. I, we, I wanted to bring up, uh, one of our sponsors because, um, I've had a few DMS about Caldera improving like people's skin or whatever, but I've also had a few where people said it actually helped with my acne. Okay. And I forgot about them until, we were talking today about this episode that we're going to do. We thought about the skin. Doug brought up acne. And then I realized something that I haven't never brought up on the show. So acne is largely, and there's lots of factors, but a large part of it is, I don't know if we could loosely label it an imbalance of the microbiome on the skin. So I don't know if you guys know this, but one of the strongest acne medications is an antibiotic. It's a very, very powerful antibiotic that essentially nukes the bacteria on your skin and then gets rid of acne, but of course you have to deal with all the negative effects of, you know, the, the antibiotic. Caldera's uh, face serum, the oil, the compounds in there encourage balanced microbiome, hmm. okay? So it's anti-bad bacteria, pro-good bacteria, and it encourages balance. It's not going to wipe it all out. It's not going to encourage, the, you know, this or that. It's literally helping balance out the microbiome in the skin, which is why dry, pe dry skin people. I was going to say dry and oily. Like and oily. So I have balance. oily skin, you have dry skin. Yeah. Both of us use the same product. Both of us end up with the same so good results. Based yeah. off of that theory then, would it be smart or beneficial for you to have like, let's say like Alessia who's coming up into yeah. those years, like she's probably in the next couple of years is when like pimples yes. and things like yes. that, is already using yeah. it. Oh wow! Yeah, absolutely. interesting. And I already, I already do have reuse stuff that helps. Oh, okay. Yeah, out. I was gonna yeah. say that's good. if it's if it's balancing out the microbiome of the skin, like I would think that that yeah. would be a like smart... traditional acne treatments. So if like like a clear cell or you know the, right. what is that? That's um, benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid, which is the wipes. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are all antibacterial. Those are all to kill all the bacteria, and that's how they get. Which rid is of why pimples. too, once people start using it, they feel like they have to yeah. continue, or it dries thing. out the skin yeah. and causes other you know side effects. So oh, then, wow. yes, interesting. Yeah, so Caldera, the botanical, it's all natural. There's no chemicals, and it. it's all natural extracts. They were all picked uh, and put in proportion to balance out microbiome. Do you guys do you guys remember like like a really embarrassing zit that you had that like you had to go to school <laughs> and you were just dying inside? Like, I mean that happened all the time when I was like a yeah. junior. I like, only had like a few of it. Like oh I, really? Yeah, I didn't really have a lot. Oh, I had of... a bad acne year. Oh, I had really? a bad acne year. Really? Yeah, yeah my junior year. Yeah, it's on your face. What's crazy though? I guess and 
I don't know. Maybe I've just been, uh, <laughs> I had crooked teeth. I was the poor kid. I had fucking knock. So maybe I was just like, what? Well, because <laughs> <you know? laughs> I know it didn't I'm traumatize me. All. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I actually look back as an adult go, fuck, but I had that. <laughs> I looked that bad. I had that, <laughs> that was pretty, rough. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe just because I had so many of my friends, we all kind of had it or like that. I, I yeah. actually, and because I, I know that could be traumatizing for some kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, some yeah. kids, like, it totally. is. A, a Especially if it's really bad. Yeah. yeah. I And I guess I just it didn't, it didn't bother me as much as it probably uh, should have because I look back the pictures and go like damn i didn't know i was that bad i, just had, I had one distinctive one and it was like it was before like the junior high dance and i was i guess it was because you know stress or whatever like it yeah. exaggerated it it started out i'm like oh uh, it kind of felt it kind of forming and then it just got bigger and bigger and oh, bigger yeah. and it was like right here on the nose yes. so it was like oh. so somebody thought that i was trying to get my, my nose pierced and it had like got affected or right? so everybody was making fun of me because like they thought i had like a nose piercing. did you try doing anything to it to get rid of it did you try oh i was like Psh, like yeah you know, just, like, yeah like, like a dude just like yeah <laughs> just i made it worse it got it grew bigger yeah. because i was messing did with you guys it. you guys no ever hear the the i don't know it's not an old wife's tale like, i don't know what it what you would call it the whatever but toothpaste you guys ever hear of that when people put uh -uh. a little bit of toothpaste on a zit let it dry as it dries it out and it's supposed to, yeah i heard kids talking about that no is that I a thing know. i mean i know toothpaste works on scratch cds so that's really good what for that. yeah you know oh, that i didn't know that Wait, how uh -uh. yeah so if you ever had a cd well, this doesn't matter anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's like so this isn't a great dishwasher tip selling just, mine. Everyone's yeah, like, impossible. this would have been a killer tip for you all for like 15 years ago or whatever but <laughs> if your steam engine yeah. breaks down <laughs> yeah yeah so when your cd would, you know when you get, your cd would get scratched and it would uh, it would suck right it would yeah. skip that part of the song or you buff it with toothpaste? yeah you actually the, you use toothpaste to, to to fill it in and then buff it out and that would it would fix what the, yeah yeah wow. and it worked yeah Jeez. oh yeah. did you look the sub doug yeah yeah. Well, I was I just getting the uh, answer about toothpaste on pimples. Oh, yeah. So it was a thing. It is a thing. Look up toothpaste on CDs for yeah. scratch CDs. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... And, and you just use your finger? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just use your finger and you just fill it. You basically kind of fill it fill it in. So, I hated We should have known that. I was like rocking one of those disc man and then you'd have Ooh, like that one CD yeah. you love that's all scratched. You can use toothpaste to buff out minor scratches on a CD. Choose a mildly abrasive toothpaste. Apply it to the scratch area with a small amount of water. And then gently rub the mixture with a clean cloth over the scratch Why surface. Toothpaste? That's so bizarre. Brilliant, oh. Adam. It would have been more brilliant if it was 15, <laughs> 20 years ago. That would have been just as good as your uh, uh, dishwasher uh, hack. That I, I feel loves. like it is that good, but if, I mean, there is. There's no. You're never using a CD anymore, right? No. Is there ever a? CD? No. You know what kids are buying now? What records? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's never going to go out of stock. Do you know why though? The Dude, original sound. That, no. that sound. That sound. No, that's cool. not why they're buying them. Why? Some kids do. DJs? No, they hang them up on the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's decor? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. If you go to like these places that sell like, you know, like clothes to teens or whatever, they'll have a record mm -hmm. section all of a sudden. Uh, well, I've been I've been collecting, and a lot of the bands that I follow, like their their whole thing is to they they're trying to bring it back because it's like an underground. Like everybody wants to kind of like f to be the uh, uh, what do they call them, like a hipster kind of guy, where it's like you know well, I'm all into the sound and like how it, <laughs> you know it vibrates and you know whatever. Um, <laughs> so like they, they do pour over coffee yeah. too in a special like coffee. And thing. there's all these like hipstery kind of um, furniture now for uh, for record players. I'm totally going to get one and, and be that guy. Um, and so I have like the listening room set up in my house, but yeah, I've been, I've been silently collecting as many like uh, records as I can. Cause that's totally going to be the, the move. I, I miss like physical things, you know, that you can kind of, it, it does give, it puts off a different, different feel, different sound. For it, sure. does. It, it does. It is a different sound. And yeah. I totally would do the same thing too. If I had a room that was dedicated to like listening and, and a good sound room like that, yeah. I would totally have. Do you a, have one of those nice record, record players, players with a horn? Yeah. What's that called? <laughs> Phonograph. Phonograph, yeah. Phonograph. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of weird you wind it up. Speaking of weird shit, that's like uh you were the one that showed me this, Justin. Did you know people are tattooing freckles? Oh, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. On their face. That that's why I was like, is this a new trend or is this something just popped up in my feed because i was like tripping out on that because when i was a kid that was you want to uh, get rid of freckles. oh my god i was i insecure about that like because i was just like <laughs> like like just all over especially like across the nose in here uh and that's what i saw them getting tattooed it was like all the way across like yeah. that was the trend so girls have done like the single mole like cindy crawford yeah, thing for yeah, a long yeah, time yeah. so that's been like one that's been a thing for a long time 
but like freckles and tattoos. Yeah, lots of freckles is kind of like that's interesting. Don't they know styles come and go? What are they going to do? I, well, what's style? so interesting it, about that I is that it. I mean, kids like that were, were a lot of kids were insecure about that as it, it didn't like them when they were little. So no, it's interesting that's it. now come into style. At, I yeah, mean, I was so happy when they started fading out a bit. I had like three distinctively like dark ones. Did right you do here. the lemon juice to try to get them to come out? No, you know I that? just I just was like, fuck. Yeah. You know? I know these styles come and go. Like Jessica, like remember that it was the '90s, early 2000s. Really thin eyebrows were in. Remember? Yeah, yeah. and she plucked uh, the yeah. shit out of her eyebrows so that they didn't grow back. And all of a sudden, thick eyebrows. Now she's pissed off. It's oh, like, ah, yeah. oh, I used to have thick eyebrows. Yeah, really, ah. really yeah. thick is popular again. Now, now. that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Groucho Marx. Uh, yeah, all my, yeah, all yeah. my people are excited about that. All <laughs> <better> training women. <laughs> Yay. I'm not a fan. Though. I got uh, huge eyebrows. The, the tarantula eyebrows, not a good Really? Thing. Not a good look. Oh, I think it's, I, I think but, they look good either way. I mean, on, for dudes, maybe. On who's wearing them. Not hey, I want to, for our shout out, I want to make a goal for our audience to support and help us. Um, it's, it's pretty ambitious, I think, to, to get... 5,000 trainers uh, listening to your three-day trainer course, yeah. I think, would be epic. And yes. so, you know, leading up to that, uh, I really want to make a hard push to- You got to sign up at- This Mind is Pump, the focus. It's mindpumptrainer.com, and then I'll be doing it starting January 15th. I'm absolutely be free. Three days. Yeah. It's absolutely free. It's going to be valuable. You, or a valuable. gym owner, or you have a chain of gym. We have friends that listen that have a chain of gyms. Mm -hmm. Get the the sales team because there's gonna be all kinds of stuff in there. Get sales team in there. Get trainers in there. Get everybody in there. We pop in. I the goal is to have five thousand attendees. I know we'll get that sign up like that. People say they'll come, but to have I would live. love to see Show five thousand people yeah. live would be really cool. So be awesome. we'll be talking yeah. trash to you for Let's sure. Do it. All right, look, there's a company called 8sleep that has the most technologically advanced sleep system around. Literally, it sits on your bed and it warms or cools your bed based off of your sleeping habits. It uses AI technology to figure out the perfect temperatures, not just once, but rather throughout the night and how to wake you up. And right now they're having their Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. By the way, they also ship to Canada and the UK and of course throughout the entire US. So check them out. Huge discount, up to $500 off for Mind Pump listeners. Go to 8sleep.com. That's 8, spell it out, E-I-G-H-T, sleep.com forward slash Mind Pump. And that's where you'll get the massive discount. All right, back to the show. First question is from Cassandra Sieg. What is the best way to quit sugar? I feel like it has such a hold on me. Please help. This is a great question, and I like it mm. because there's those people out there like, sugar's not addictive. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, it can be because it's it can be super palatable. And some people have way more challenges with this than others. There's two approaches that I have seen work. Unfortunately, they're super opposed to each other. They're actually both <laughs> very, very different. One approach is- Eat the, so much till you throw up. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the wow. cigarette thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, one of them is the gradual approach. Um, I would say probably 50% of my clients did better with this, where rather than cutting sugar out, we would reduce it slowly over time. And they seemed to do better with that. And it was typically like we would track, we would get their total sugar content, and that'd cut it down by a quarter. And every week we cut it down by a quarter. So after four weeks, it was out of their diet. Hmm. The other approach was cold turkey and that worked well for the other 50% because some people, the gradual reduction just triggered them to want to eat more and they needed to just get rid of it and deal with the, you know, the, the, the wanting it so bad for a few days or a week and then do better with it afterwards. I did, I do better with the quit approach, the cold turkey, but it, it's really weird how some people do well with one and not it's the other. It's pretty split. Yeah. So, I, I, I now you're, you're you're the most addicted. Yeah, as I say, I don't I don't know if I'm an authority on this, but I definitely <laughs> have, have dealt when it comes dealt, to ice cream. I've yeah. dealt with this probably the most <clears throat> of us, just because I've, I've admitted having a, a serious sweet tooth and I've struggled with sugar. You know what was of all the things, and I've tried everything that you just named with the cold turkey to coming off a little bit to making the things that are low sugar, no sugar treats that give me that same kind of, you know, the biggest thing that has ever helped me was actually, this is the one positive thing, the most positive thing I felt about the ketogenic diet. Oh, killed it, huh? Yes. Mm. And it was- Because not I, only do you had no carbs, no sugar. Yes. Yeah. It, it, I was surprised at how much I did not crave sugar. 
it really blew my mind. It was only when I allowed it and reintroduced it to the. You think I, it was like a reset of your palate in a sense? You know, I don't. It know. might be the satiety, right, from the fat and protein, because it really kills your appetite. I don't know what mechanism it was that really caused it, but I remember when we all went on ketogenic diet and we talked. about I remember about you all, saying that it yeah. was crave sugar at all. Was, at all. In fact, it was so beneficial to me that it actually has forever changed my relationship with it. It's I've ne as as much as I talk about the times mm. where I'll have candy or ice cream or things like that. Pre ketogenic running ketogenic diet to post. Um, total different relationships to this day. Wow. Hmm. I, I do. I have a much better hold of my sweet tooth than uh, I ever did before. And mm -hmm. even though I will allow those things in the diet freak here, here and there, it's nowhere near what it was pre doing that with a ketogenic. Now, all, the thing that changed pre ketogenic is I, I used to be a very carb heavy diet person. I remember back in the like days, 400, 450 yeah, up to 600, right? Oh, wow. So 400 to 600 grams of carbs was very regular for me. Now, remember I'm talking about when I'm training seven days a week and I'm 230 plus, right? So total different place in my life than I am right now, but I could eat that many carbohydrates and stay lean. And so, but when I was eating that many carbohydrates, it was really hard to not allow a hundred to 200 grams of those coming from sugar and stuff. And so, and I would, a lot of times when I went keto, I, it, it killed that craving so much. Mm. And, and then when I came off of keto, I now became this person who only ate about 200 to 250 grams of carbs. That would be considered a, a higher day. Maybe on a crazy high would be 300 grams of carbs is what I would consider now a really high carb day for me. And because it, I eat less carbs, which means I, I intake more of my calories from protein and fats, it tends the team tends to keep the cravings down a, a lot. I can get carried away with mm. sugar uh, as well. And I notice with myself, the more I have, the more I want. Yes. It's like the more regular I am with candy uh, or sugar, yeah. yep. the more often I want it's it. It's a snowball effect. Yeah. And I, and I think that's true with almost anything that, uh, that you'll have a challenge with. It's like, yeah. it's probably better to avoid it if that's you. Um, and with, with me and candy, the longer I go without it, the, the less I want it. And, yeah. and recently, actually not recently, it's been now, <laughs> it's been months now, <laughs> but I developed this habit of ordering, uh, you know, we'll, we'll DoorDash uh, ice cream. And um, it started out as like a, oh, we're only going to do this once. And then it became like, a, oh, I'm going to do this all the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Baskin Robbins has this like dairy free ice cream and I'll have gummy bears on it. And then my son and I will eat it together and, and you know, watch it. And, Sounds watch like TV. a six year old, right? I know. I know. <laughs> gummy bears on the. <laughs> It's, it's daiquiri. In my bubble gum ice cream. It's literally <laughs> blue colored. It's called daiquiri ice or ice daiquiri flavor. It's so funny. But uh, since I started doing that, now I'll want candy from the gas station yeah, or yeah. candy when we travel mm -hmm. or whatever. Because the more I get it, the more I want it. And I've noticed that with clients too, that, that they're, they're better off. Yeah. If, if, that, if there's something that's a trigger for you, it's harder to moderate it. It's yeah. probably better to avoid it. For me, it. it was always like um, at the end of the night, right? Is is were you the a big candy one. person ever? No, not a candy, but more of like a like chocolate peanut Sugar butter alcohol. Yeah, alcohol. <laughs> I mean, that's really the vice. Yeah, for sure, is the whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's not as much candy, but yeah, he puts a Jolly Rancher in it. There's my sugar. <laughs> so, oh, so you're chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was always the. the you're like thing. a PMSing woman. You like I, the chocolate. I do. I have I have cramps sometimes. <laughs> no, it just stop, really helps. So. Do you really like chocolate? Chocolate. Or yeah, always have to be a peanut uh, butter. Yeah, I like chocolate, but uh, yeah, that was one thing. I, I'd go slightly more bitter as I would go. Like, and I Doug. I, I think I took that from Doug. So. That that's actually a hack from Doug that I got totally. too. Wait, so he goes really dark. Yeah, really dark yeah. chocolate gives me a bit of that satisfaction of like I'm eating a treat. But then I don't even like a whole dark chocolate bar. No, just like a piece. I, yeah, I could just mm -hmm. break off. How pieces. dark is it, Doug? That you go? Like I like eighty five percent. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good because it's got some bitterness to it. Mm -hmm. What's the one you get? There's one that you the get dark dark. that's got really low sugar. You had me eat it sometime. Didn't you get I it mean, from Trader Joe? Where'd anything that's 85% is pretty low sugar. <laughs> the one I like the most is Alter Eco. Oh, that's the one. Yes. I think they call it Blackout or I, I can't remember the exact name of the, the bar, but it's super uh, creamy and smooth. And you always have it on you? Not always, no. Every time we travel? I He's usually... He's I usually good. buy it. Yeah, he usually yeah. buys it when we're out. Yeah, or I'll buy. Uh, I mean, there's various brands, but I never but used to do that. No, so I got that from Doug. It's I actually mean, pretty good. I, I, I can now, do that too. I, I do, now yeah. tend to keep a, a dark, dark chocolate big bar too in my mm -hmm. freezer, 
And if I have yeah, moments Courtney where I, that, I, I really want something uh, chocolate like that and I've been good, let's say, not having it, I'll go have that. And I notice that I only need a few pieces. I only want a few pieces of it. Give me like a rate, like Reese's peanut butter cup or something like that. Oh, I'll eat dude. a whole bag or something like that. Yeah. Like, it was Halloween just yes. recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's a strategy too. And this is a little harder to do, but if you can do it, it works pretty damn well. If you're like, oh my God, I want to eat that candy or that sugar treat, say you can eat it so long as you have a protein snack before it. And this tends to work because protein is very satiating. Now I know people think are like, I don't want to do that because I don't want the candy anymore. That's the point. That is. Is you'll yeah, eat this. Exactly. Yeah. You'll eat like 15 it's, grams of protein with a jerky thing. or something that's got protein in it or a little bit of chicken or something. That's also a really good hack. That's yeah. something I've also utilized too, where I, I give myself the permission to have the, so long the as candy you, sweet, but yeah. I say, oh, you know what though? I still haven't hit my protein goal today. Let me go and yes. get that first. And then if I still want that treat, I'll have it. And I'd say at least 50% of the time or more, I end up not having A high it. protein food will kill most cravings because it's so satiety producing. In fact, it's so effective, mm -hmm. you will find yourself saying, I don't want to do that because I know I won't want that thing anymore. And that's the point. That's the whole point with it. Next question is from Iron Street Gym NWA. What is the best replacement exercise for squat and Romanian deadlifts? Oh, all right. Uh, split stance exercises are great as a replacement for squats. Yeah. You're still getting that squat motion with the front leg. It puts you in a split stance with, for, which for a lot of people, by the way, I wish I knew why they were replacing squats yeah, and know, deadlifts. Yeah, more context. Because I'd be able to give a, a much better answer. But, so I'm going to give a generic one. But the split stance tends to be easier when people have issues with their back, when people have issues with, uh, you know, a knee or a hip, split stance extra. So like, like um, Bulgarian split stance squats or lunges. Are really good, and then for Romanian deadlifts, um, I like hip thrusts. Hip thrusts yeah, will get thrusts that. Are, it's a safe option yes. too if there's like any kind of uh, in, uh, I don't know some kind of imbalance or some kind of pain involved with why you're deterring from squatting or doing Romanian deadlifts because those are very staple movements that you want to include in your programming. Um, so the squat, it's really, it's like, it's, it's the variations of squats at that point, right? Like if you, if you're looking to avoid a back loaded squat, you know, there's, there's so many other options with yeah. ways to do front. squats, goblet, doing Cossack squat, even something that's a little, uh, you know, going to, going to, uh, require a little bit more, uh, of a different muscle, uh, recruitment pattern. Um, but yeah, split stance, I, I love split stance just because you also work on stabilizing uh, the joint and you get a lot of benefit from yeah, that. Definitely don't give up on fundamental foundational exercises though. Uh, by the way, if there's any exercise that you do that's relatively common that you find you can't do, there's an opportunity there to identify imbalances and weaknesses in your body. Okay, so like, oh, I can't do an overhead press. I can't do a bench press. I can't do a row. Like fundamental exercises don't give up and say, I'm not going to do that exercise because it bothers me. Figure out why it bothers you because those are foundational movements. So if you can't squat and you can't hip hinge like a Romanian deadlift, that's fine. Find alternatives, but then figure out why and fix the problem. There's something there and you'll get tremendous benefit from solving that issue because squatting is such a basic human movement yeah. that there's something there there's something that you should you should yeah fix. my, my guess valuable. i mean i didn't pick this question but my guess is by the handle right iron street gym that maybe this is someone who owns a gym or they have lots of trainers that work underneath them and then they're maybe asking us if you had to replace yeah. these what would be your top exercise to replace those mm. which i i think we all and looking at both exercises it sounds like a back issue because yeah, right. if you back. can't squat exactly. or romanian deadlift so it's thinking. probably back that's right. why yeah, if you're laying on, on a bench and you're doing like a hip thrust, it'd probably be the safest if there's restriction. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, yeah. well now you guys are speculating even further that I wasn't going to go that far because then because it does matter. If you start, if it's injury reasons or yeah, pain sure. related or whatever like that, then it's like, okay, well, what, what is the pain? What's specifically going on? And let's address it, unpack it, and then figure that out. But a generic answer to me is like Bulgarian split squat to replace mm -hmm. the squat and a single leg deadlift or hip thrust to replace yeah. the... RDL. I, I will think. say this, one of the safest in terms of injury risk, yet effective exercises for the lower body is a sled. Oh yeah. Period end of story. Period end of story. Yeah. If you're a trainer or a coach and you have a client who's, you know, has issues with lower body exercises, like they will probably be able to push a sled and you'll probably be able to slowly scale up the resistance on the sled to the point where you'll be able to get them to do other exercises. The sled is like, one I like of the best. that. Next question is from Alana B40301. 
Is it bad to fully lock out your arms when extending in a bench press or overhead press? Are you supposed to leave your elbows soft during the lockout? No, you need to go fully extended. But here's the difference, okay? If I fully extend my elbow and I relax so that the weight is sitting on the joint. So yeah. if your elbow hypoextends that's a little bit. That's the problem. That's where the problem is. And then the joint is supporting the weight. That's a problem. If I fully extend but keep extending and stay tense, mm -hmm. that's good. The reason why you'll hear some coaches say things like, leave your knees soft at the top of a squat or leave your elbow soft, don't fully extend, is because people have a habit of pressing up and then letting the weight rest on their joints. That's not a good idea. That can cause a lot of problems. You always want to stay tense. So when you press the bar up, even though you full extend, continue to, to press out, continue to generate that outward force so that everything's staying tense and it's not the joint that's supporting the weight, it's the muscles. So... Did you guys do this when I was when I was a trainer earlier, especially the first like five five or so? Um, I actually I always I trained sh short of full range of motion yeah. because of this, because it was this is an area where you know we're saying you know keep tension on the muscle. That's kind of a tough thing to. It's a tough thing to convey. Yes, yeah. like you could say that <laughs> a yeah. bunch of times to a client and try and explain yeah, it to that them. Was, that was hard. Yeah, but the the natural thing that a lot of clients will do is lock out. You know, the right. lock out in the squat, they'll lock out in the the bench press, and they'll rest on the joints uh, as the default. And so, yes, I would want to train my client to go full range of motion and keep tension on the muscle. But if I see them resting on the joint repeatedly then I actually will train just short of full range of motion until they can until they learn it. Yeah. Until they learn and they're yeah. more experienced. And so depending on who's asking this question, like what I used to say to clients was yeah. keep pushing the weight out and they'll say, what do you want me to do? Roll my shoulders for no, no, no. Just keep that outward tension. Like you're pushing the bar up or like at the squat, like you're still trying to stand up real tall and that cue yeah. tends to work really well. Well, it that's why anchoring the shoulder blades is so important. Yeah. You know, and then too, like packing the shoulder for overhead press, especially too, learning how to do that and keep tension there, uh, supporting uh, the joint. Um, that's, I mean, it, I had the same issue for a long time as a new trainer, but like being able to like really be intentional about that yeah. from the very beginning and teach that technique and stay there quite a bit until I felt like they had that control where they would stay tense in the muscle to put anything overhead. It was, I was like prerequisite before any of that. I also think this is where like the value of like isometrics and learning how to connect and flex a muscle. 100%. Yes. Because once you, if, if you could, if you could have no resistance and you know, and this is a good goal for all people to have is to be able to flex every single muscle in your body. Yeah. Like without any weights right now is like, can you flex your shoulder? Can you flex your bicep? Can you flex your tricep? Can you flex your quad? Can you flex your hamstring? If you can learn to flex all those muscles without any sort of real resistance, then just adding resistance and then being able to cue the client, like keep your chest flexed through the whole movement. Like don't yeah. let it rest, like keep it flexed. Even as you fully extend, that will also keep that client, the tension in the muscle instead of resting on the joint. Next question is from Animal Marie Fit. You guys always insist that trainers have your programs. How do you recommend that we use them with clients? Are we using them as examples for effective training or actually using them with clients? Uh, I think if you're if you're an experienced trainer, you use them as a blueprint that you work off of. So if you know your client well, you could follow our programming and then make modifications based off of the individual that you're training. If you're a newer trainer, it's a scaffolding for your program. Yes, if you're a newer trainer, follow it as it's laid out uh, because we did a pretty good job. But a, a good trainer will always know how to you know what modifications they need to make to make a program effective for their clients. But I would use them 100% as I would, scaffolding. I would make the case to to follow it pretty damn close to a T unless you're a really experienced trainer. Right. I feel like really experienced, bunch of national certifications, lots of years under your belt of training. Like, okay, I, like, you know, do your thing. You write your own programs. You're really confident in it. Um, you can look at our program and you can like see like, oh, I see exactly what we're, they're trying to do here, what's going on. Like, then by all means, then, you know, move around things or whatever, take out something, replace it with something else because your client has a very specific need or, or want for whatever it is that they're, they're doing. Right. But 
there's there's a ton of value with if your client is capable of doing all the movements that we've programmed in there is literally following it to a T and learning why it's programmed that way. Because one of the mistakes I've seen and I've seen trainers do this that are that we that we've helped and we've coached and we and this they take it and then oh a client wants something else and so they just add to it. Mm. You know, they just add to the the yeah. program other yeah. things that this client also wants. And it's like no, when we wrote those, we were we're considering that this is this is their strength training. All right. of their strength training is right here. And if I'm gonna do anything else for that client strength training wise, I'm going to adjust yeah. that. And unless you, you feel for the volume and everything that's else. That's right. So associated. unless you feel really confident on, oh, my client also wants to get really good at jump rope or always also wants to get really good at box jumps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna program that in there. You don't just slap it on and add it to everything we have and then fall. It's like you have to know what to pull out and what to replace it or with. where to put it. Yeah. What the and so, like. you know, I, I would recommend as coaches and trainers to follow, use these most, things. Most use these them. things. Yeah. Most people listening and watching right now, follow them as they're laid out, I yeah. would say. Your training is in when they're doing the exercises, their form, their technique, yes. their control, how they connect to the muscles. That's where the training comes into play. But workout programming is so much more complex than uh, new trainers even will begin to understand. You really don't get and understand workout programming until like 10 years in. Yeah, okay. don't let your ego get in the way here. I feel like that's the thing that you, like, I got to stress because all of us trainers, all of us, including myself, okay, we all have these egos of like, oh, I don't need them. To, I could program myself. It's like, yeah. but why? If there's somebody who's been doing this for, a lot longer than you have that took into consideration all the challenges yeah. you're going to come across. Like yeah. use that, like you'd be silly not to. And it's in the, yeah. And it's, and if you own them already and you have it, it's like for sure do that. So yeah. Even as a reference, I mean like all the different avatars, we, we literally have like, like communicated this between the three of us, like over and over, like who are we not addressing? What need is out there that we still haven't uh, uh, fit? And so it's, it's, it's really like each one of our program intentionally is trying to address very specific type of, of client that's out there. That's right. There's not that. And that's another reason why I say follow to a T because if you think your client is special for some reason, they have a different want, desire, need. Yeah. Uh, there's probably a different program that we wrote that would address that need. Yeah, if you're like, oh, MAPS Anabolic is a little too advanced from, oh, we have MAPS Resistance. Yeah. Oh, that's still a little too advanced. Okay, MAPS Starter. Right. Or, oh, they, you know, they have mobility issues. Okay, well, let's do Prime Pro and Prime. Or, you know, they're athletic. They like the functional. So, okay, let's go MAPS Performance. Uh, that's why we have so many damn programs. Right. And more, and more to come because there's always, yep. there's always an avatar out there that could use a program that's more um, more tailored for them. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They're free. They can help you. You can get all of them. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam.